What can I do for you? I found Eugene's teeth. You can have them. You found Eugene's teeth? What? Where? How? Um, Adelaide had them. She was using his body for fertilizer. McDevitt? The old flavor specialist? That yep. is just grotesque. I suppose I should be grateful. You've saved me some trouble and no small amount of embarrassment. I'm told Eugene killed himself. What happened? Eugene was not a suicide. He put a bullet in his brain, yes, but that's largely a technicality. What I was mean? the one who prepared Eugene's body for interment. I discovered symptoms of the plague on his corpse, and I discovered medicine in his pocket. Lots of medicine. Eugene right. overdosed on Adrena time, which is known to cause psychosis and paranoia as possible side effects. The paranoia drove him to take his own life. So the town never had to pay a penalty. We can all thank our lucky stars that young Eugene was hopped up on medication and suffered its predictable side effect. I included it all in my official report. I'd like to think I saved Edgewater a great deal of money. We never could have paid the fines associated with a suicide. Right. Well, goodbye. Somebody's been running around town raving about a colony ship. Plague must have gone into their brain matter. All right, well, uh, I've got that medicine you were after. Thanks. I'll see to it that this medicine gets to the people who need it. Here, something for your trouble. Nothing personal, but I hope we never do business together again. Don't want to make a habit of consorting with smuggler types. Uh, never? That's harsh. At least leave me something to remember you by. You do have some cheek on you. Lucky for you, I kept a little contingency fee in case you tried to negotiate with me. Hmm. And who are you going to give that medicine to? Somebody deserving. Silas, on account of him being out in the cold. Amelia, seeing how she's around people all the time. Anybody in the sick room? Hmm. Alright, that's good. Well, what do you do here? Oh, I'm an actuary. That means I keep tabs on a worker's living expenses. How much it costs to feed, clothe, shelter, bury, and replace your average human worker. Technically, I'm employed by the Spacer's Choice Department of Human Resources. I see. Alright, well, I'll leave you be. Something to report? I'm here to turn a bounty. We pay by the finger. What do you have for me? I have, uh, Gil Antrim's finger. Gil Antrim. Real name, Guillaume. Duly processed by a freelancer on behalf of Spacer's Choice. I remember him. I was just a kid last I saw him. Shame. Now, mm. I just need your signature here, 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 and here. Uh-huh. Got any more fingers for me? Um, I have Birdie Cotton's finger. Here we are. Birdie Cotton. Cause of death. Let's just say overwhelming physical trauma. Bert was the local preacher before Max took over. Always uh -huh. was quick to remind us that we all get what we deserve in the end. Still one outstanding bounty. If you've got a finger, I've got the paperwork. Well, guess what? I have a finger. Doc Maybell's finger. Mabel Burgess. Age 37? Right or left-handed? Let's just say, no longer applicable. I remember Doc Burgess. Conducted my physical every fiscal quarter. Guess she couldn't keep her hands off her patient's medicine. Well, that's all three. I must remember to requisition some more fingerprint ink. Here's all the compensation you've earned, plus a bonus. It's this. Junior... Deputy Constable? You've done such a bang-up job hunting down our former workers that I thought it only proper to deputize you. Congratulations. Oh. So, how did so many people, so many of you, of your people end up marauders? Let me stop you there. It is uh, official Spacer's Choice policy that all marauders, regardless of prior affiliation to the Spacer's Choice brand, no longer qualify as our people. Well, you still haven't answered my question. Marauders are folk who lost the will to keep working, wandered out into the wilds and gave into their baser instincts. Not everyone's cut out to work in Edgewater. Some turn deserter, some turn marauder. None of them get my sympathy. Well, they sure seem, seem to like Adrena time. Everybody likes Adrena time. It is the finest medical drug ever developed by Spacer's Choice. Much better than that crap anti-Cleo petals. Sure, uh -huh. a little too much Adrena time can bring out the violent animal in you, but if overdosing on Adrena time turns you into a lunatic, you have only yourself to blame. 
says so right on the warning label. Violent psychosis is a well-documented and legally accounted for side effect of Adrena time. Right. Um, something else I wanted to ask you. What's on your mind? Goodbye. You want to mingle? Go try the cantina. Sorry, Abnerthy. I gave the anthracillin to someone else. You what? But why? I was dependent on you. Does it feel good? Robbing an old man of his last shred of hope? Sorry, but I did what I had to do. Betray a man in his final hours? Of course. I understand. Hell, I'd probably do the same to you, given the chance. So, you just here to watch me die, or what? Um, yes. Any progress on that matter we discussed? Yeah, I've got your book right here. Wonderful. This is fantastic. Well worth all the sacrifices I... Wait. What? What the fuck is this? Is what? this... French? I can't fucking read French. <laughs> it's a law-forsaken joke is what it is. French. Ha! I was so high and mighty, preaching to the yokels about following the plan, while fighting it at every turn. That book seems a bit more important than he let on. There is little more important than such a precious, rare text. I've spent my life searching for the keys to unlocking the secrets of the universal equation that underlies the plan. I had hoped right. this book held some of those answers. I became so desperate, I even got myself assigned to this plague-ridden backwater to find the damn thing. All the time and suffering I've spent. Wasted. Plague-ridden backwater? What happened to all your crap about leading your flock? Please, those dolts? Uh, Nothing could be more excruciating than discussing the true nature of reality with people who have no interest beyond their next Aether Wave program. But that's neither here nor there. What I need to do now is to find a translator, obviously. But to do that, I'll first need to secure transport. You have a ship. Perhaps I could make myself of use to your crew. And what exactly could there be in it for me? Free spiritual counseling, someone to watch your back. Not to mention a grown-up in the party. I'm 28. Exactly. I'm pretty handy with a tossball stick, or any blunt instrument, really. I'm also a passable gun hand, if it comes to that. I can usually talk my way out of conflict, though. Oh, I'm fairly competent at hacking computers as well. That all part of your vicar training? Well, understanding computers is, though I admit I took it further than most. And I was quite the 32nd back during my seminary days. <laughs> Left many an opponent bleeding on the field. Are you even a vicar? Because you aren't sounding very vicarly right now. Of course. I'm a vicar who is dedicated to his calling. More dedicated than any other you'll find in this colony. I joined the OSI to help decipher the grand plan. But instead, I ended up the vicar in a prison due to ignorance and politics. Then I came here. Satisfied? No, how'd you get assigned to prison duty? Most lay people are not aware of this, but we've not discovered any new insights into the plan for a long, long time. Right. I had an idea that we should welcome the truth, no matter where we found it. I had the worse idea to share my thoughts with a superior. And that's the long and short of it. So, what do you think? I think you weren't being completely honest with me about that book. What's the story? It's the journal of one of the originators of the Philosophist School of Thought, though it would be more than a century before it was perverted into that belief system. Philosophism's mm. a false religion that stands in contradiction to almost everything we know to be true. They believe all is chaos, in stark contrast to OSI's belief in the plan. But most of that came later. Bokonu had some interesting theories about man's perception of reality that I thought could be applied to our attempts to decipher the plan. Well, all right, Vicar. Um, don't make me regret this. Let's go. Fantastic. Let me get my things in order, and I'll catch up with you. Edgewater's gonna miss you. Folk here always had good things to say about their Vicar. Thank you, Ms. Holcomb. I'll be glad for the change of scenery. And to leave this place behind. I shall see you on the ship, 
Captain. Whenever you're ready to leave Emerald Vale. Alright. Sounds good. The control room should be ahead somewhere and a touch to the right. Okay. What the Plan of running at 22% efficiency. Power is currently being distributed to Edgewater Cell Tuna Cannery Botanical Laboratory. Surgical damage detected by the Warning: Safety failure is detected. High likelihood of moderate to severe structural damage. Redirecting power is an irreversible procedure. Power redirection function has failed. Manual override required. Please activate all three electrical track switches. Two more. What'll happen to Miss McDevitt's folk if we send power to the Vale? Self diagnostics complete. Navigation um. systems operational. Combat systems operational. It's not the best choice. It's the spacer's choice. This is odd. W why aren't you attacking Hostile me? Hostile actions towards spacer's choice mechanics are contrary to logical directive. Conclusion: what? All hostile auto mechanicals must be defective in compliance with Spacer's Choice policy. All defective auto mechanicals must be permanently dismantled. Please allow me to assist. Let me get this straight. You want me, you want to help me destroy other mechanicals? Affirmative. Mechanicide protocols loaded. Awaiting confirmation. Hmm. Well, I do like the sound of that. All right, confirmation granted. Here we go. Um, excuse me. You're not real. You're not real. Get away from me, Phantom. Shoot, scram. Calm down, sir. I'm not trying to hurt you. You can talk. The Phantom's uh, never talked before. Oh, I knew I shouldn't have eaten that sprat raw. See, see, Higgins. This is why you must always boil your sprats before ingesting. You're eating sprats. Of course. Sprats are an excellent source for my daily recommended intake of mercury. Chester D. Higgins. Mercury. The D stands for definitely not insane. I use it as a reminder. Right. And how long have you been down here? Ooh, hard to say. By my reckoning, Higgins has been here somewhere between two weeks and forever. My recollection's a touch fuzzy these days. Uh-huh. And what exactly does Higgins do here? Oh, Higgins has been many things over the years. Sprat Wrangler, Saltuna Critic, Aether Wave Personality, Chairman of the Board, Galactic Defender, Sisty Pig Tycoon. I've come hmm. a long way for someone who started off as a simple engineer right here in this plant. You were an engineer? I specialized in auto mechanicals, drones, sentries, Repaired them, maintained, upgraded, did it all from my old workroom just over in the next section. Right. W was that before or after you became a Sisty Pig Tycoon? Oh, before. Definitely before. Sisty Pig Tycoonery was the apex of my long and storied career. How have you been surviving all this time? Jimmy'd opened the vending machines. That lasted a good couple of months. Eventually, I had to resort to more unconventional means of filling my insides. So that's when you ate the sprats. Braised. Boiled. Charred. Skewered. Sprats are good eating, friend. Chock full of brain food. So what happened to this place? Mechanicals lost their bolts. Opened fire on anything that moved. It was pandemonium. And you weren't killed? I was on cleaning duty at the time. My old boss had me scrubbing pipes when the killing started. So, as usual, I missed out. Hmm. Well, hold on a minute. Uh... How could this have happened? You mean, why did the Mechanicals go on a murderous rampage? Same yeah. reason any of us do, I suppose. The voices told them to do it. I was on cleaning duty at the time. My old boss had right. me scrubbing pipes when the killing started. So, as usual, I missed out. Well, if you, if you worked on these Mechanicals, you must know a way to stop them. Look, I don't want to fall into any trouble with the Mechanicals. If they wise up to our plans, they will come for us. With plotting irons. Look, I can deal with mechanicals. I ran it this far, didn't I? You know, you remind me of myself back when I was an intergalactic adventurer. I discovered a flaw. Their hostility levels were hardwired to maximum. 
There's no changing that, but you could rewrite their targeting protocol so they attack each other instead. Hmm. Mechanicals follow the behavior of their logic module. Someone tampered with it. Yes, that's exactly it. I see you're also versed in the noble art of mechanical engineering. There's a behavior well, I've control dabbled in the other here room. Or there. It should have options to change how the mechanicals act, including whom they shoot at. Mm. Oh, God, that reminds me. You'll need my passcode to access the behavior control terminal. Here, let me just write it down for you. All right, I'll just excuse myself. There it is. To go. If we send the power to Miss McDevitt, what happens to the veil? <sighs> All right, there it is. Yep. I'm not sure what the right is. All I know is the decision's final. Yeah, got that right. Once we do this, there's no going back. No. Hey, mister? Uh, Look, I know you want your power regulator and all, but I just gotta ask you. Do you what? understand what you're about to do? Well, I wouldn't mind hearing your opinion, if you have one. I don't think you should cut off Edgewater's power. I think it would be cruel. I I'm sorry. That just sort of came out all at once. Edgewater's hurting. We've been losing workers year after year, and corporate hardly ever sends replacements. There's barely enough Saltuna to fill our bellies anymore. But the town's got some good people in it. Decent, hard-working folk just living their lives the only way they know how. Well, they don't deserve to be punished. The deserters are, you know, good people. Sort of. Decent. I can't exactly destroy what they built. Miss McDevitt's been using corpses in her fertilizer. The thought just makes my skin crawl. Sure, she's found a solution, but it ain't exactly pleasant. It's plain to see she's made the Vale a better place. Fed the hungry, tended the sick. Gave a home to those that had none. But Miss McDevitt delights in Edgewater's suffering. She wants to hurt the town. Do you really want to be party to that kind of hatred? All right. But... Well, Reed tells me Edgewater's gonna die without workers and power. That sure sounds like Mr. Thompson. If he was standing here, I imagine he'd remind us of how we're all one big, happy Spacer's Choice family. In Mr. Thompson's eyes, those deserters are still part of the Spacer's Choice family. The family must work together in order to survive. I hate to say it, but I think Mr. Thompson's got a point. Unless those deserters come back, Edgewater's as good as dead. Cutting off their power might be the only way. Hmm. Alright, I see your point. I think I'm ready to make a decision. Sorry, I didn't mean to babble on like that. I just... I felt like I had to say something. Well, I'm glad you did. I like hearing from you. Really? I mean, wow. Thanks. I, no one's ever told me those words in that order. Yeah, well, you're welcome. <clears throat> Excuse me while I save time for a bit. Oh. Okay. Um. Boom. There we go. Let's see what kind of trouble I've caused. You want to know what gets my bile churning? What's up? Edgewater has suffered a cavalcade of disasters, plague, marauders, desertion. Then you wandered in town. And I was so damn sure our luck was starting to turn. I never knew how right I was. Just answer one question for me. Why'd you do it? To teach you a lesson. Is that right? I'm dying to hear this. Please, educate me. You're all slaves to Spacer's Choice. I'm liberating you. Liberating? Edgewater is my home. The only home I've ever had. I put down roots here. Gave decades of my life to this place. I never asked to be liberated. Whatever you were hoping to find down here, I advise you to turn around and leave. I have got guards posted with orders to fire on you. I bet you call off your guards, Thompson. 
I don't want them bleeding all over my power regulator. All right, easy now. Let's not do anything we'll regret. I'll order my guards to stand down. Take what you came for and then leave us be. All right, yeah. You know what? I don't think that's the best idea. I think, Pravati, I think there's some truth in what you said. This time I'm gonna... I'm gonna do it for reals. Adelaide will just have to deal with it. Marauders can't see us in the dark. Wild canids, on the other hand. Uh, hello. I talked Zoe into coming back. We didn't always get along, but I'm glad to know she's safe. What happened, anyway? She joined up with a band of marauders. They hadn't hurt her. Zoe joined up with a band of marauders. <clears throat> Zoe. The same Zoe yes. who doesn't know a barrel from a trigger. Well, I've heard stranger things. You pretty much did my job for me. Least I could do is pay you for your trouble. Let me know if I can do something for you. I'll, I'll leave you be, ma'am. Mm. Zoe says she fought her way out of a marauder camp with her own bare hands. Yeah, sure. See you around, kid. Ah! Where's, uh, where, where's Thomas? Hello? Anybody see Thomas? I'm here to talk to him about... Oh, here we go. Everybody keeps staring at me. It's not my fault the power's dead. Today's your lucky day, Thomas. I've got one of those data pans you wanted. No kidding. Really? Well, which one? The elusive part three. Someone stashed it away inside the old geothermal plant. The geothermal plant? Now that is just incredible. You really went exploring down there? Adelaide sure. Adelaide always told us it was swarming with hostile mechanicals. That's it was, yeah. Set. All three parts. I'm going to be the greatest engineer Halcyon's ever seen. Um, aside from you, Ms. Parvati, I swear, I'll do you proud. I'm glad we could help, Thomas. I've been saving something for you. Just a little contraption I found. Should fit right into your outfit. Oh, thanks. I should go. <clears throat> I have some, uh business to discuss that's the thing about growing old your eyes start to fail elsewise I would have seen you for the snake that you are chopped you into pieces and roasted you on a spit this is all you're doing cutting off my power killing off my garden without refrigeration my food will spoil and my flock will starve I want to ask you this in private, away from the eyes of my flock, so they do not see me lose my temper. Tell me, why did you do it? Reed uh, needs his people back. You want my flock wasting their lives in that cannery? Fine. Go and talk to them. Go talk to Grace and Thomas. Look them in the eye and tell them their life here is over. And the only thing left to do is go back to Edgewater. This is now your responsibility. And you tell Reed Thompson that I will never return to Edgewater. I would rather die among my flowers than live under his management. Adelaide, come on. You're being unreasonable. Come back to Edgewater. As long as Reed is still in Edgewater, I will not return. Those are my terms. Well... How about I deal with Reed for you? You offering to cross Reed off, huh? This some sort of twisted reparation for what you've done? Or are you just looking for a chance to sow some chaos? Kill Reed if you must, or talk him into leaving if you can. He and I are not sharing the same four walls together. Hmm. Well, that wasn't exactly what I meant, but... I'll think about it. Grace and Thomas, huh? <clears throat> Sorry, uh, I'm just trying to figure out what to do, is all. Yeah, Thomas, you won't survive here without power. It's time to go back to Edgewater. I've been thinking about going back. I'm not much used to anybody here. 
I get sick thinking about working at the cannery. I can't do that again. So don't work at the cannery. You wanted to be an engineer. You know something? I think you're right. The town could use another engineer, and I'm on my way to becoming one. Yeah. I do a lot of good in Edgewater. Maybe even keep a garage of my own with a little workbench and my very own toolbox. It's sure. Just... Adeline's never gonna forgive me. Not in a hundred years. I go crawling back to my old life in Edgewater, and I'm as good as dead to her. Why is that? Adelaide hates Edgewater. Hates everything Edgewater stands for. Hates what that town does to people. What it did to her. We're the nearest she's got to kin. We go back to Edgewater, we may as well have stuck a knife in her heart. Alright, well, you know what? Stay put. I'm gonna try to talk Reed into stepping down. You know where to find me. I should go. I think you did the rightest thing you could, sending the power back to Edgewater. A lot of people would have suffered otherwise. People I care for. Even if they ain't care much for me. Well, Thomas seemed very fond of you. He's just interested in fixing stuff. He always used to follow me around, asking me to explain what I was doing. Like a puppy, kinda. Hmm. Are you sure? He nearly fell over when he saw you. He never told me a word to that effect. And, and since he didn't, I didn't have to say nothing about being... about feeling different. And nothing had to get weird. Hmm. Now, let's get back to it. Hello? This is a fine day, friend. Power flows through our town like a cool stream of water. I trust hmm. Adelaide's people have seen their way to reason. So... When can I expect them back at their posts? Yeah, about that. I spoke to Adelaide. She won't come back so long as you're here. Then we are at an impasse. Stewardship over this town has been entrusted to me by Spacer's choice. I am not perfect. I have made my share of mistakes. But I have done my best for this town. Really? This town's a mess, Reed. The town's terrified of the plague. Abernathy asked me to steal medicine for him. I am not without compassion for Abernathy's predicament, but the plague has taken a hard toll on us all. I am a Spacer's Choice man. My father was a Spacer's Choice man. Edgewater may not look like much to some buttoned-up freelancer, but it is my home. Well, Adelaide's people aren't getting sick with the plague. I don't believe you. Plague's a reality of life. Best treatment is a good work ethic. This town doesn't eat anything but salt tuna. Of course you're going to get sick. You are disparaging our parent company, and it is not appreciated. We are a Spacer's Choice salt tuna cannery. We eat salt tuna here, and only salt tuna. I'm pretty sure it's your food that's making you sick. You need Adelaide's garden. I don't understand. You say Adelaide's growing her own food, but that should not be possible. Well... The soil's gone sour. Company said as much. Our own botanists couldn't grow decent crops for us. So the company got rid of them and shut down the greenhouse. Well, I'm telling you now, Adelaide's found a way to grow food. She'll come back if you step down. You'll excuse me for being skeptical. How exactly is Adelaide growing crops in barren soil? She's growing her crops with um, a special fertilizer. And when you say special fertilizer, you mean what exactly? Uh, corpses? Mostly human. Adelaide has been using dead bodies in her fertilizer? That's... It, come to think of it, that's a stroke of brilliance. It is? What a remarkably efficient solution. Recycling Spacer's Choice property long after its date of expiration. I was wondering about those missing bodies in Silas's cemetery. Look, this town needs Adelaide, alright? She won't come back so long as you're here. So, Adelaide wants me gone. Trade my life for the life of the town. You understand what she's doing. If I leave town, I am as good as dead. If I stay, Edgewater will die of attrition. Adelaide has discovered some secret cure for the plague, and she is holding my town ransom. This town could use all the help it can get. If Adelaide's found a way to feed her people and cure the plague, then she deserves this office more than I do. 
I won't stand in her way. My life here is ended. Give me a little time to settle my affairs. I'm sure Adelaide will be glad to see the back of me. What are your plans? A couple months ago, I might have put in for a transfer. It's a big colony. Spacer's Choice has other towns. Now, I couldn't show my face in any of them. Why not? No such thing as an honorable resignation. Suppose I could find a place outside the walls, or put in for early retirement. You won't last a day outside the walls, you know. I don't know. I could see myself lasting a week. You don't have to do this. I do. Adelaide's found a cure for the plague, and she knows how to tend to crop. She's what this town needs. Well, I'm sure this can't be easy for you. I have always tried to do right by my town. It has never been easy. Hmm. Well, I'll take care. Look at that. The snakes come back. Hello. I talked Reed into leaving. Come back to Edgewater. Never thought I'd see the day that Reed Thompson abandoned his post. Suppose we all have a breaking point. Suppose it's time our flock made our way back to Edgewater. We must tend to what remains of the town and carry on with our lives as best we may. You're vexing to me, you know? Injuring us with one hand, helping us with the other. Here, I'm giving you something to leave us be. It's a ransom, you understand, not a reward. Hmm, no, well, Edgewater's better off with you running the place. You're telling me you did all this just to put me in charge of Edgewater. Stranger, you are some kind of twisted. Something like that. I might turn that old cannery into a garden. Got ourselves a whole cemetery bursting with bodies. I need some time to gather my personals. Long walk back to Edgewater. Got a considerable burden to carry. All right, well, you take care. I'll be taking that, if you don't mind. 